Hello there. I just thought I would answer a lot of questions I've been getting lately about my heart condition and what I'm going through and maybe answer some questions for people who are going through the same thing. So currently I am on a halter monitor that when I get a symptom I can either press this and I'll get a little menu here and I'll mark my symptoms and right now I have no symptoms so I'll say no symptom normal daily routine tell them what you're doing and then hit send and someone on the other end of this line is seeing exactly what's happening inside of my body how are they doing that it's not magic sadly um, I have electrodes all over my body attached to this life watch monitor it's battery operated it can either hang around my neck or put one of the electrodes on there we'll get that to that in a second because that doesn't work but for those of you who don't know um, you get this box it comes with the electrodes extra batteries because you know you're a robot and you need batteries, more electrodes, um, the setup instructions, but they normally set it up for you when, when you're in the hospital. You also can enter to win free gift cards, which I have done all four times that I have done this and I have not won yet. And then you get that little holster if you're older and want to put it on your belt, but I rather just hide it in my pocket like a normal cell phone. And I try and hide the electrodes the best I can by wearing modest attire. Um, so yeah, this comes with a, a charger. And you have to charge it every single night. And if it dies, you have to restart the starting process and re-sync it to your monitor. And that's not fun for anybody. Um, it does go off if, it's not, if you're not close enough to it. So I keep it in my pocket at all times or in my purse. Um, even at work, um, but at night if I'm sleeping over there and it's over on the windowsill right about here, sometimes it says it's not close enough and it buzzes and it wakes me up. And this has been going on for 30 days. I've done this diagnostic test. Uh, this is the fourth time. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar, I have inappropriate sinus tachycardia, otherwise known as IST. It means that for no reason at all, my heartbeat will jump up to at least 200 beats per minute when I'm doing nothing at all, when I'm sitting, when I'm eating dinner, when I'm driving, it'll just be like, oh, you're running, and I'm just like, no, not really. Um, and it's the worst when I sleep. I'll be dead asleep, and my heart will just boom, 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 boom. I'll feel it, and I can feel my entire body shaking with adrenaline. And at first I thought um, it was my husband, uh, shaking the bed, and I, so I would yell at him, like, stop shaking the bed, and he's like, I'm not, and, uh, we finally figured out that it was my body shaking because of my heart rhythm, so to progress along here with the day in the life of a heart patient, um, being a heart patient requires a lot of money, a lot of doctors, and a lot of medicine. Currently, I am on Corlanar 7.5 milligrams twice a day. In the United States, for this is a one month supply. For one month supply, um, it's five hundred dollars for thirty pill, no sixty pills because it's twice a day. Um, so I have found a way to get it from I don't know if you can see um, Istanbul, Turkey. It's not focusing, but you can kind of see it. But um, so I've been getting it from Turkey. It takes about a month to get here so as soon as I get one I order another one and it is a hundred dollars so I'm saving four hundred dollars and the shipping is not that much either originally I was going to try and get it from Canada so for those of you who are getting US medications and you can't afford them or your insurance doesn't cover them because insurance does not cover Corlaner by the way because it's not FDA approved yet but if you are a heart patient um, with inappropriate sinus tachycardia. I highly recommend that because I've been on four different beta blockers and none of them worked until this one. Um, I was on metropolol, I was on 
Carvedilol. I was on a couple other ones, but I won't bore you with that because uh, we're already five minutes into my day in the life of a heart patient. I haven't really shown you anything except for my toy and my pills. Um, the funnest part about being a heart patient is um, when you get to take this off and be free. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that. That's gonna be fun. Ready? You rip this off your skin. And if you are like me and you're allergic to clear tape, you can see that nice welt surrounded by a blister. A nice little water blister. And um these electrodes are here. I'm not gonna get too graphic. I'll show you over my clothes. I have another one here. You can see inside my shirt. I have one here. And I also have one here. So I have wires all over. Um, and I also have welts all over and these cute little water blisters. So you disassemble this and then usually the phone gets really mad. It hasn't noticed that I took off the white electrode yet, but it will and it'll buzz. And um, so that's the first part of it. And then basically you shower off all the gel and your welts get really amazing and gross and welty. And then, super fun part, is you get out a new electrode and you place it back onto the welted, horrible area. And then you wear it for a couple more days. You can take a shower with them on, you can take a shower with them off. I've had these particular stickies on for a couple of days, a couple of showers. And I don't know if you can see it losing their stickiness right there. Um, so I'm going to change and get new ones. So, yeah. That's the first part of my day is I assemble my monitor after I shower. Which is what I'm going to go do now. So this is the system off of me. That's the necklace and the activator with its buttons. See, there it goes, saying that I'm not wearing it. Please check electrodes. Well, the electrodes are on the counter, so yep, they're checked. But I call it the octopus because it has its tentacles. And the tentacles wrap around me oh so ever gently. But um, I figure you probably want to see me tear off another one because who doesn't like grody things? So, yep, tearing off some of my skin. Cute. Look at all those water blisters that I have. And um, in about half an hour, I'm going to have to put another set of electrodes right back on it. And no, that's not just like sleep marks or something. Those are actually welts. Um, I don't know if you can see how deep. But yeah, that is on my chest, on my stomach, and on my under ladies. So I got nice and clean, showered off all the residue, which there's actually a lot, like a lot of nasty residues left behind behind those electrodes. But um, I wanted to answer some questions that I get um, whenever I talk about this. So question one is usually, what's wrong with you? Well, what's wrong with me is Inappropriate sinus tachycardia, as I explained earlier, uh, I'll go a little bit more in depth to it. The regular person's heartbeat is anywhere from 60 beats per minute to 80 beats per minute, depending on what they're doing. My resting heart rate on medication is around 80 to 90, which is really good for what it was, because it was between 180 and 200 beats per minute, just resting like I am now, like sitting... Um, and then when I'm exercising, it's through the roof. I did a stress test last year, which is where you're hooked up, kind of like what I wear every day, but um, with more stuff and then like a breathing tube. It's called a stress test. You run on a treadmill. Um, you're supposed to do it for 10 minutes, and the, it steadily inclines and goes faster and sees how much you can stress your body. Um, we got five minutes in, and they had to pull me off because my heartbeat got up to 230 beats per minute. And at a certain point, your heart does explode and rupture from going too fast. So they literally pulled me off the treadmill, and it was a unsuccessful diagnosis because I couldn't finish the test. And obviously, um, 
being halfway through and that stressed they couldn't continue. So my IST is slightly, well it's kind of under control because I see those little triangles. Those are the Quilaner. I take two a day so those are for tomorrow. I took one this morning so that's tonight's. Um, I take Quilaner twice a day and it's a beta blocker. It's to slow down your heart rate. Um, and this one works really well for me. The other ones gave me insomnia, they made me sick, one of them made me hallucinate, which was horrible. Um, another question I get a lot is, how does it feel to have a palpitation? Well, for me, for everybody it's different, but for me, um, I get three different types of palpitations. There is the fluttering one that's not so annoying, it just kind of feels like there's a little butterfly trapped in your rib cage and it's just like mm, no, 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 I'm here and um you feel it and you're just like okay and that's your heart speeding up and you know then slowing back down and you're just like okay and it lasts like one to three seconds and you're like okay that's fine and then um the one I get most often is when I'm sleeping and it's the pounding one where it's inside my chest and it feels like my heart is punching my rib cage to get out and that one hurts quite a lot it wakes me up out of sleep um, I have to take sleeping pills currently to get a full night's rest or else I'm woken up every 20 minutes with the punching even on the core lanor. and then um, the third one which is not fun either none of them are fun but this one I kind of hate because it happens just randomly the, the two main arteries in your neck um, I can feel the IST kick in. It gets up to like 200 beats per minute still sometimes. And I can feel the, the veins just pumping the blood away like they're supposed to. But they're also closing my throat a little bit because the veins have opened because there's so much blood rushing through. It kind of feels like I'm choking a little bit. Um, and that causes lightheadedness, dizziness because there's too much blood flow to the brain and that's never good um, and that still happens that actually happened at work yesterday and um, it feels like you can't breathe it feels like there's something sitting on your throat um, they're all very painful and usually lead to left arm pain afterwards and um, my left hand will go numb and I won't be able to feel my fingers I won't be able to feel my hand probably up to my wrist um, and then after the numbness goes away there's a dull ache on my left arm for about half an hour with any of these palpitations, even the fluttering ones. Um, sometimes my left leg will even go numb, especially my foot and my toes will go numb, but my calf never goes numb, which is really weird, but then my left knee right above it goes numb. So I don't know what's that about, what that's about, because it totally skips um, my calf muscle, but my knee will go numb and my foot will go numb. and. Um, it's only happened a few times, but I have passed out. I've passed out in the shower. I've, um, because it, it, my blood pressure dropped so quickly, um, I've passed out here on the couch just randomly. Um, thankfully it hasn't happened when I'm driving or doing something important, um, that could potentially hurt me or somebody else. Um, but that's only happened a few times. Um, I'm going to a neurologist to look at that, but, um, that's a whole nother questions video about my uh, findings of my MRI of my brain so I will make that one as well um, another question I get is um, how big is your scar the scar goes from this side all the way to the other side and it's like a like a W if you follow my finger it goes like that and like that and it goes across my entire chest um, that's the middle of it. It pretty much all looks like that. Um, goes under my breasts and um, apparently I'm one of the lucky ones because they only did that in 1988 to babies with uh, heart conditions. They did the bikini cut but apparently they realized that it was a bad way to do it because a lot of the girl babies um, got infections in their breast tissue they completely lost their breasts or they were malformed or something like that so thankfully like if I'm wearing a shirt like you can't even tell like my boobs are fine 
um, but some girls apparently weren't so lucky, which sucks, um, and if you're one of them, you know, I'm sorry, I hope that your insurance pays for what the doctors did to you, um, which is also why I can't get a, a redone bikini cut during my next heart surgery, because chance of infection, I could lose my breasts, I could lose my life, you know, it's a, it's a big incision, and they're opening up your entire body to get to your heart, um, so it would be a zipper scar, like I said earlier, um, another question I get is, um, are you affected by exercise, and that's the weird thing about my case that has always plagued the, the doctors, um, no, I'm not affected by exercise, really, I mean, if I, like, super run, like, at my hardest, yeah, I feel like crap, and I feel like I'm gonna pass out and die, but I think that's also because I'm not very fit, um, but, like, you know, just, like, running around chasing my niece, or, you know, going for a walk, or standing up all day, eight hours at work, like, yeah, I'll have episodes, but they won't be any worse than normal, what is the worst is laying completely flat, and my heart will go crazy, and it feels like it's pounding out of my chest, it feels like I can't breathe, um, even reclining in my recliner, if it's all the way back, it does the same thing, I feel like I can't breathe, I feel like my heart's punching out of my chest, it's just all very awful. Um, another question I get is, um, are you scared? Yeah, I'm scared, but I don't let it affect me, because it's not going to do anything. Being scared about it isn't going to change the fact that I have a flap in my aorta that I can feel shutting off blood flow. It's not going to change the fact that I have inappropriate sinus tachycardia. And I'm actually having a palpitation right now. So too bad you can't see that. It's happening. Um, yeah, I'm afraid. I'm not afraid of my condition. I'm afraid of surgery. The surgery and the scar, which I know is very vain and stupid. But um, I'm 28 years old. And to have a giant mark like that for the rest of my life that people will gawk at and ask questions about... Because just wearing that monitor where you can see the one electrode, I've gotten so many invasive questions and so many rude comments um, at where I work. Normally, um, it's covered, but sometimes like my shirt will move and you can see it. And I have to bring out the phone, the, the symptom phone, and you have to do it within 30 seconds of a symptom so they can know what to look at on the readout. And so I pulled out my phone one time, and I did the symptom check, and I put it back in my pocket. And the customer was like, oh, that was so rude. And I was like, but I'm sorry. And she's like, you're texting on your phone. And I was like, actually, ma'am, this is a medical device. And I pulled down my shirt, and I showed her, like, I have uh, basically a mini EKG on my chest 24 hours a day for a month. Um, this is my symptom phone. This is not my real phone. And I wasn't texting. I was marking a symptom I just had a heart episode. Instead of being compassionate, like I would have been to someone who told me that, she said, oh well it's still rude to take your phone out. I'm a customer and walked away. I was like, okay, I'm sorry that me having heart problems is affecting your life for those two seconds I had my phone out. Even if I was texting on my phone, like really, really, you have to talk to me like that? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I get rude comments. I used to get bullied about my scar, but that's a whole nother thing. They used to call me a boy, because back then we didn't know what transgender was in, um, what was it, fifth grade? I don't know that word. They're just like, oh, she used to be a boy and she got breast implants because of where the scar is. And um, I get teased a lot for that. Um, I was also very underdeveloped growing up. I didn't develop till I was about 18. Um, so that kind of put fuel on the fire that I had a chest scar and no boobs. And they're like, oh, what's the reason for it? And back then I didn't know the terms, you know, ASD, VSD, type B, interrupted aortic arch, repair. Um, what else? I've had every procedure pretty much imaginable. Angioplasty. Um, I'm blanking right now. But yeah, so as the day progresses, I will let you know about the day in the life of a heart patient. Thank you for listening, 
and I hope this helps any other heart patients out there or helps inform other people who are very ill-informed about um, heart patients and what they need. They don't need your sympathy. They need your, your strength, your advice, your patience. You do not comment on their medical devices that they're using in front of you. Um, I'm very self-conscious because of it. I don't wear certain things because of it. I wish I could wear those cute little cleavage shirts that all the girls are wearing right now. But then I'd be subject to bullying or questions or, you know, I know it could be worse. I know I'm just kind of like bitching, but, um, yeah. It sucks. It hurts. The medication is expensive. I've seen seven different cardiologists in the past five years. One of them looked me dead in the eyes and said, there is absolutely nothing that can be done for you to make you better. And uh, I went home crying, and me and my husband decided, oh, it's time for another opinion. And that's how we found the cardiologist we're seeing now. But you had to be told that your condition is so rare, there's nothing that can be done. It's awful. So life as a heart patient just got way more interesting because my monitor just stopped working. See that heart and how it's beating? It'll randomly stop beating and then the whole phone will shut down and restart. When I hit my sensor, nothing comes up. And I was on the phone for over an hour with LifeWatch trying to restart the phone, take the battery out, restart the whole system. They're still getting readings from my little necklace here, but I can't tell them if I'm sitting down, if I'm standing, what I'm doing, what hurts, if I'm having like a heart attack, if I'm having palpitations. Um, so basically the conclusion is that they're gonna send me a new box and I have to start all over because we don't know if the information is corrupted. So, this lovely 30-day electrode issue is turning into 60 days, and I am not happy about it, and um, I'm definitely not going to pay twice, so I just wanted to update with that, so there's going to be, there's going to be some hell to raise with uh, this piece of shit, so, um, yeah, if you have a life watch, uh, ambulatory cardiac telemetry system, um, maybe not go with life watch because this is the fourth time I've gone with them and this is the fourth time I've had a problem. So, uh, not calling them out personally, they're probably a great company, but maybe not use Blackberry cell phones that are unreliable and this is the fourth different Blackberry and the fourth different time that I've had problems. So, yeah, there's my mini rant on um, 30 days turning into 60 days of heart monitoring. So, let's talk about doctors. Doctors don't always listen, sadly. And, um, mine particularly pissed me off today. Because I called yesterday, letting them know that my my heart monitor wasn't working every time I tried to beep it for an episode. It wasn't recording. And so they're like, okay, we'll send you a new one. While I was on the phone with them, it began to work. I said, no need, please don't send it. They're like, oh, the information is already sent. We're sending it. I was like, okay, so there are people in my apartment complex that steal things off of other people's doorsteps. And they're like, okay, well, we'll make sure that when FedEx comes, they won't drop it off unless you sign for it. I've been at work all day. I just got home to find this on my doorstep. It is a completely new heart system. The one I told them not to send. The one that I told them if they send, I need to sign for it. Because this package alone, $3,556. I'm sorry, $3,956. If that was stolen, I am liable for it. So don't always trust your doctors. Don't always trust what people tell you to do. Always trust your gut feeling. My gut feeling was to not call them and tell them that my monitor wasn't working because I had a feeling it would start working again, which it did. 
And but no, I tried to trust them and look where it got me. So now we have to wait for the update on if I have to pay double on my insurance because I got a second monitor. So yeah, I'm not saying all doctors are untrustworthy and I'm not saying don't do what people tell you to do, but you know your body best, you know your situation best. I've done this halter monitor thing so many times that I just had a feeling, I was like, it'll start working again. I've done this before. I just like, cause I get to take it off tomorrow. I was just like, oh, I want to make sure they have all the results, and that happened. <sighs> so, if you're in the same boat, trust yourself. Don't trust Life Watch. I already said that a zillion times, but um, be good to yourself. <laughs>